Hello, I'm Seafood Source Editor Sean Murphy, and this is Seafood Source TV, the bi-weekly video blog bringing you news, information, and insights into the world of the seafood industry. This week, an offer is unveiled to buy out a major Norwegian salmon farmer. Seafood Expo Southern Europe takes Barcelona by storm, and organizers are gearing up for a major aquaculture conference next month. But first, we want to give you our take on the National Fisheries Institute's stance on a presidential task force studying pirate fishing and seafood fraud. The task force, presented by the U.S. State Department and the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, emerged in June following the State Department's Oceans Week meeting. The task force is looking into the problems of illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, otherwise known as IUU fishing, and also seafood fraud, specifically mislabeling and related issues. Now, before we go any further, it's fair to note that the task force has given no specifics yet on just what its mission is regarding these issues and isn't due to make its recommendations to U.S. President Barack Obama until December. But NFI officials are telling us what makes them nervous now is the idea that the task force might be looking into new regulations to control IUU fishing and fraud. We're concerned about that, too, but not out of indifference to the problems of IUU fishing or fraud. We're just concerned, as NFI is, with whether the task force and potential new regulations are the best vehicle for solving these problems. NOAA's own data shows half of the seafood that comes into the United States every day comes from aquaculture and as such could not be connected to IEU fishing. Much of the rest is tuna and a few other species, all of which are already covered by a long list of existing U.S. and international regulations geared toward monitoring fishing of these stocks. Now, in the NFI's estimation, this leaves about 11% of the seafood coming into the United States lacking regulatory coverage. There's no question that such gaps need to be filled, and IUU fishing is a perennial problem worth addressing. But we agree with the NFI's belief that the issue is not whether we need more regulation, but how we can improve enforcement of regulations already on the books. If this is the task force's focus, then we applaud their efforts. But if they go to President Obama with a list of new rules to ask Congress for, we can't stand behind that. Like the NFI, we believe new regulations will be a waste of time and resources, both for the government and the seafood industry, which doubtless will have to devote more time and energy to jump through yet more regulatory hoops. As to the issue of fraud, we believe this too is an important problem that needs attention, but we do not believe that a single task force can adequately study and issue recommendations on IUU fishing and fraud, two issues that each are worthy of their own investigatory body. Lumping them together is too simple a solution to two very complex problems. That's our take this week. Elsewhere in the news, Mitsubishi Corporation has made an offer of about 1.4 million U.S. dollars to buy out Norwegian salmon farmer Cermak. It's just the latest in a series of moves concerning Cermak over the past year, including an attempt by rival Marine Harvest to buy the company back in 2013. Now, Cermak spurned that offer, but Cermak's board of directors is recommending taking the Mitsubishi offer just announced this week. If the purchase is confirmed, Mitsubishi expects to close the transaction in November. Staying in Europe, Seafood Expo Southern Europe was a success this week, running from September 22nd through 24th in Barcelona, Spain. And Seafood Source has been providing full coverage of the show all week. And you can read stories about the show on SeafoodSource.com right now. The expo was presented by Diversified Communications, which is the parent company of Seafood Source. The Global Aquaculture Alliance is gearing up for its Goal 2014 conference, scheduled for October 7th through 10th in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. The conference will cover trends in feed and risk management. Attendees will also get an update on ongoing issues such as EMS in Southeast Asia and the latest on other challenges to the industry. This week, James Wright, our senior editor, spoke with GAA President George Chamberlain, and you can read the full interview on SeafoodSource.com right now. A biotech firm is suing Cook Aquaculture in U.S. federal court alleging patent infringements. The Bangor Daily News of Maine is reporting three companies, including Marical Inc. of Portland, Maine, are suing the Canadian salmon farmer, making four legal claims and demanding a jury trial and unspecified damages. In the suit, the plaintiffs charged that Cook had a contract with them to use four patented processes, but continued to use the processes after the contract went out six years ago. And finally this week, it's not often you hear the phrases sustainability certification and baby food in the same sentence, but the Marine Stewardship Council is now certifying products made by UG, a processor based in France. The company is known for producing frozen vegetable purees for infants, but recently expanded its line to include frozen flaked cod portions. The new products use cod certified as sustainable by the MSC, so yes, even baby food can now carry one of those little blue labels. That's it for now, but we'll be back in two weeks with another edition of Seafood Source TV with more news, information, and insights into the world of the seafood industry. I'm Seafood Source Editor Sean Murphy. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you online.